So here we get going. Um, my name is Christina Kendrick. I'm going to turn my video on so you guys can can see me. And I'm joined by uh, my my peer and colleague, Dr. Roberto Linares. There he is as well. Um, so today, this webinar is going to be about 30, 30 minutes long, and then we're going to have some time for some Q&A at the end. Um, we're going to discuss some top challenges and considerations in the cement industry, as well as in AI in general. Then we're going to talk about what are some actual AI applications and use cases in the cement world. So we're going to start with our um, asset and process optimization product called um, Petuum Optimum, as well as a use cutting use use case that we've done with Semex. Uh, we're also going to talk about a ready mix application. And then lastly, um, some Q&A at the end. All right, and a brief introduction to who is Petulum. Um, so we are a relatively young startup company. We've been around for a couple of years. Um, our founders were based out of a university called Carnegie Mellon out of Pittsburgh, which is where we're currently headquartered. Um, we have other offices as well out of Sunnyvale out of the California Bay Area. We have some remote locations in addition to that. Um, but basically, whenever our, our co-founders, um, one, of, one of which actually leads up the research department at, at CMU, um, they started to realize that there is a gap between what's happening in academia and what's readily accessible to the real world and to, to, to business users. And so they founded Petulum. Um, we've been fortunate to be backed by tier one sponsors. And right now we have over 50 AI experts from top schools on, on staff. And so that's really important because we're continuing to invest into R&D, making sure that we have cutting edge technologies built into our platform and, um, and industrial solutions. And recently we've even been, um, right here, we, we can see that we've even been recognized. Late last year, we received the Cement Project of the Year Award um, from ICR, the Semtech Conference, um, from our work with Semex. So that was a really proud accomplishment in addition to some of the other awards that we've received just because of our technology and our advancements in the artificial intelligence space. Okay, so starting off with some top considerations and challenges. Um, so as I'm sure a lot of you folks have, have read online, uh, PCA forecasting that this year cement demand is supposed to be steady. Um, potentially there'll be a little bit of decline with the ongoing economy indicators. And so during these times, it's really important that we look at ways to increase or keep your profitability. Um, and it, now is as good of a time as ever to try to streamline and build in efficiencies into your processes. And so here are some examples of different business drivers for why you should consider industry 4.0 smart manufacturing um, and, and ways in which you can actually tackle that. And so the first example I have here is cost leadership. So basically, how do you produce cement at a lower operating cost and save on the production side? And then the other option is the premium selling, which is basically how do you sell your product at a higher price point because of the quality of your product and also because of the, the affiliated brand that you bring to the table. And so both of these different business models have a focus on operational intelligence, which, excuse me, a focus on operational excellence, which can be achieved with, with technologies such as AI. And so over on the right hand side to, to walk through a few of these examples. So the first one is that cement production is clearly very energy intensive. Um, if you are able to increase the energy recovery in the kiln um, and potentially even being able to use alternate fuels, um, just having be better overall asset efficiency, you're gonna be able to do things like save on the energy costs um, and um, in, in turn, also the second point here, the emissions regulation. And so if you're not having to burn as much fuel in, in order to produce that cement, 
it's kind of a double positive benefit here where you're also not going to be releasing as much CO2 or other emissions into the atmosphere, um, potentially helping you reach your Energy Star certification um, and just comply with overall EPA regulations. Another point I've, I've got listed is the quality of the product. And so how do you go about actually having a prediction capability in, in your production process? So you're not waiting until the end, but are you able to recognize different indicators throughout and, and make changes during the production of Clinker rather than waiting um, for lab results after the fact? So those are just a few examples for you folks um, on the business side. Now, I guess turning, turning on a little bit more onto the technology. So once you decide that you want to optimize your business, um, you decide how and where you want to invest. Um, AI is definitely a, a tool, a technique that can be used um, to address some of those different applications. Um, and I do want to say up, up front that while AI is a very powerful tool that can accomplish a lot, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right fit for all businesses and all use cases. And so these are just some things to consider whenever you're evaluating AI. So the first one is the data component. Um, a lot of us have been collecting data for a long time and are trying to figure out how we actually want to go about utilizing that to bring us new insights to our business. And in fact, over time, I think that the data that's being collected is only going to grow exponentially. And so one thing that you're gonna to wanna to consider is the AI at scale. How are you going to be able to um, prepare that data, make sure that that data is clean and ready to be ingested by an AI model? And if you have different um, anomalies or false positives in your data, how do you recognize that so you're not getting a bad recommendation from the AI solution? Um, in addition to that, talking about AI at scale, it's, it's also a matter of um, the platform of choice, right? How are you going to actually ingest all of this data? Are there other third-party applications that you need to connect to? Um, those are all things that you should consider. The, sec the second one here is the actual talent that will be building these solutions. And so the AI engineers, machine learning engineers who are building this solution, um, and, and these folks are definitely rare and they are expensive and in high demand. Um, and so one of the, the factors to consider is depending on the complexity of your use case, um, you might need a few different Different machine learning engineers to all have different specialty areas. Uh, one of the reasons, for example, that we've got 50 plus AI folks on staff here at Petuum is because they focus in on, on very um, focused areas, whether it be neural networks, computer vision, time series, uh, deep learning. Um, and sometimes you might need a combination of these skill sets in order to actually create your, your perfect solution. And then the last point is actually bringing your ideas to production. Um, and there's been a ton of statistics on this, but unfortunately, a large amount of uh, projects at Enterprise today end up failing. Um, and, and there could be a number of reasons for that, but it is quite difficult to, to take a concept and operationalize it. So you want to make sure that we have fast time to value. You've got um, accomplishable pro problems that can be solved with this technology and that you're tapping into the minds of your operators, um, basically being able to collect some of those insights. We're in a, in a strange time right now where a lot of folks are on the board of retirement, and you wanna make sure that you can collect and um, use some of their knowledge even after they retire, whenever you're expecting new folks to be coming in with less experience. How do you make sure that, that, that you can maintain um, status quo during those times? And then also, not just on like the, the initial upfront building of your project, but how do you make sure that your AI solution is going to work in the long run? And so not just showing a little bit of ROI upfront, but how do you make sure that people are actually using this? Um, over time, your models will start to diverge from reality, and that's totally normal. But how do you go about retraining these models, um, maintaining it? I'd say it's probably 
the most important part to make sure that you're actually getting money back on your investment and your time spent in um, investing in AI. And so I do have a, another polling question for you folks. I'm going to launch this now. So out of all three of these different considerations and factors for adopting AI, which one do you think is the most difficult for your organization? All right, we've got a couple of answers coming in. Give you guys another 10 seconds. All right, it looks like the ideas to production, so actually being able to um, operationalize your ideas is number one, and number two is AI talent. Awesome, thanks for participating. Okay, now that we got the intro stuff out of the way, I wanted to start with um, where can AI actually be applied in the cement industry today? So here are a few examples for you folks. And, and this is really a subset of where AI can be applied across the cement and concrete business. Um, so all the way from the initial planning, um, being able to understand what your demand is going to be, um, scheduling the, the production, um, procuring your raw goods, um, the actual making or the manufacturing process of creating clinker, delivering it, and then also managing across the line, whether it be managing your equipment and your machinery, um, whether it be helping with the customer interaction side, um, these are all good places where different elements of AI ha has, a, has a great role. Um, and, and really think about any type of workflow that you have where you can help amplify an operator performance, um, or if there's a human in the loop in a decision-making process, basically being able to use data in different tools in order to um, have a more statistically data-driven solution. And so today, because it is a quick session, we're gonna only gonna be focusing on two of these. So the first one is going to be on asset and process optimization. The second one we're gonna focus on is the ReadyMix fleet optimization application. Okay, so this first one is, is uh, what we call Petuum Optimum for asset and process optimization. And basically what we're doing is we're helping you reach your operational excellence goals using forecasting or predicting models as well as optimization models. And so we go through a number of steps um, in order to do this. First, we're evaluating your data. We're building correlations or a neural, neural network of how your different process variables um, have relationships with one another. Then we're going about creating predictions of what's going to happen five, 10, 30 minutes in the future for each one of these process variables. And then we work with you to configure what are your goals, your constraints, um, and then we optimize what we think is the, the best path or the recommended option, which we call prescriptions. And then lastly, once we've gone about um, validating these with your operators, our internal SMEs, such as Roberto and other folks, we launch what's called supervised steer. And that is where the prescriptions are being fed directly back into the control system as a closed loop solution. And so today we've got model, uh, modules available for the entire pyro process um, with an option to include alternate fuel optimization, um, or you could also do the cooler as a standalone asset. We also have modules for ball mills, vertical mills, and enhanced emissions. And I'll take a quick pause. Roberto, I'm not sure if there's anything that you'd like to add here, but... Um, well, the only thing that I would say is that for sure, once we go through the process of prediction and they can see a very nice 
prediction there in the orange line for one of the process variables, we know that we can tackle the optimization problem. And then once we know that we can tackle the optimization with uh, reasonable prescriptions, then we can go uh, ahead to do a control loop for this, uh, for the process that you mentioned. Great. Um, so just one more slide before we get into like the nitty gritty of how we would go about configuring this. Um, there we go. So this is basically a graphical representation of how we apply AI to the manufacturing process. So first off, you have a, everyone has a comfort zone, right? Like we're all humans at the end of the day, based on your training, your experience, you start to develop a comfort zone of, of how you go about um, setting your different set points um, and getting, getting different outputs. And cement is a very complex, very highly variable process, which is difficult to model um, in the real world. And it's also dynamic, right? Like um, here on the corners of this is just a couple of examples of what an operator is balancing in, in, in the moment. And sometimes depending on your current operating conditions, some of these might be higher priority than the others. And so what we do with um, our Petrum Optimum product is we learn from the historical and the training data, and we learn from all different types of operators, all different shifts and operating styles. We start to learn what those relationships are to one another. We work with you to define what the goals and the, and the um, constraints are. And then what we're able to do is to push the boundaries of your comfort zone and reach a new level of optima um, by going through those different phases that um, Roberto and I mentioned. Roberto, anything else that you wanted to share on this? Well, uh, something that I think is important to mention is that our models capture not only the relationship of the variables, but also the dynamic uh, nature of the process. And that's very important because as we know in this uh, cement industry, we have important delays in the process. Uh, when we, uh, we know that we perform a change or the program uh, makes a change um, in the set point, let's say for flow rate, it's gonna take some time before the clinker temperature will go down to the expected value. So, so the, the system takes care of all of these delays and dynamics and is very powerful uh, so that it can assist the operator in a, uh, in a way that the operator has to uh, can, can uh, see the, the system working, doing the adjustments, let's say every five minutes of 10 set, 10 set points, for example, for a cooler. And that's something that is not possible for a human being. Right. All right, Roberto, I'll let you also talk about this next slide here about an example clinker cooler configuration that we've done. Yes, thank you. Yeah, uh, typically in a cooler, uh, there are uh, different goals that you, uh, uh, these are typically the maximization of the secondary air, which will help you to reduce the amount of fuel that they use in the main burner. Uh, the tertiary air heat uh, will, that will help you to reduce uh, consumption of the calciner. Uh, also, uh, you might want to uh, keep within certain constraints your, your clinker, right? Your clinker temperature. And in other cases, uh, your exhaust gas cannot go beyond cert a certain limit. In, in order to do that, uh, we see here that there are some uh, controllable variables. So uh, we can take action in the fan flows. Uh, the, uh, fan flows can, you know, depending on the uh, manufacturer, we can, our type of uh, cooler, we might have seven, eight fans or more than 10. And we might uh, control the undergrade pressure of one of the uh, uh, undergrade compartments. In other cases, is this V could be a speed, right? So system. Something that I think is very important is, uh, to consider in this type of uh, systems uh, that are AI based, we can add uh, more uh, variables to the to the system. For, for example, the chemistry. Uh, what is the feed rate currently in the kiln? What is the burning zone temperature? Uh, the amps of the kiln, and we. Uh, also for the fan flows, uh, we can have the, the flow rate, the speed of, uh, the, of each fan, the power consumption, and that can make the, the system even more robust when it's doing um, the uh, 
the predictions um, of the optimization for the system. So as you can see here, we are, uh, we are building a model, right? That has more than 40 var variables. As, as we implement the system, uh, the, it is really easy uh, to later add more variables in a, uh, let's say that now we have an, a new uh, variable that we didn't consider before. AI can take it uh, and I can take, uh, as I said, as, as many variables are, are, are needed for the configuration. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks Roberto. Yeah. And then this next slide here is actually a video. Um, and this is just to give a, um, a visual representation of what some of those dashboards and the output of the Petrum Optimum product looks like. Um, and so Roberto, if you could just just help us whenever we go through this, talk through some of those different points. Mm -hmm. Yes, if we can stop right there, for example, here we are seeing uh, the predictions. Uh, for example, if we see uh, there are two lines. One line is the uh, prediction. The other one is the actual value for the different goals. Uh, for example, for a cooler, we, we know that the goals are related to secondary temperature, tertiary. In this case, this particular uh, uh, kiln doesn't have a calciner, for example, and then we, we don't have a, a tertiary. Uh, but we have for every uh, variable that we want to either optimize or keep within constraint, we have uh, the, the predictions. And you see how, uh, how good the predictions are uh, and the very good correlation uh, that the dynamic system is doing. And, and uh, yes, yeah, so if we go to the uh, next one. Mm -hmm. So once we know that we can predict, right? Uh, you know, we can, if, for example, right here, we are seeing a very, very nice prediction. And one of the lines, it is ahead. Uh, and the other one, uh, it is the actual value. So the prediction um, is, is very, very accurate. And we can anticipate uh, the changes that have to be made that have to be made in order to uh, to achieve the all of the goals simultaneously. Of course, with with their own weight factor. Yeah, uh, and something that you can see uh, right here is the the different prescriptions. Here that we have eight fans with uh, two uh, speeds, uh, stroke speeds. And then we also have dashboards in order to analyze the, the performance when we are uh, doing supervised steer with optimum or when, uh, when a super, uh, the supervised steer is off so that we can uh, do comparisons uh, in order to understand the value that we are delivering and how we can help you better right, as we go through uh, the support of the system. Okay. And Roberto, just a quick time check. We've got about five minutes remaining. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, and, and something that we have done uh, with multiple uh, coolers, uh, different, and these are uh, some coolers from CIMEX, and these are two cases, uh, one from US, one from Mexico. In one, we are achieving uh, an increase, a sustained, uh, a sustained average uh, increase of secondary air temperature and ter tertiary air temperature uh, with a a reasonable uh, increase of uh, clinker temperature, right? So this basically uh, creates, a, a, you know, a more um, return of energy to, to the kiln and to, to produce energy savings. Uh, and also uh, we, we have the capability now to cool more clinker and, and to push more uh, feed and, and fuel and to increase the throughput. And, and sometimes even that the the objective is not to, let's say, reduce variability in some variables. By the nature of the operation of the system, doing the smooth changes, we see also reduction in, in process variability of many, uh, many variables. And uh, basically, we are able to search for the golden, uh, the golden days and combinations of set points that will give you the, the optimum results, right? So that's, a, that's in summary. Perfect. And I know that this is a, a quick summary. We do actually have a, um, a new use case to deep dive on our methodologies um, and um, some more 
more of the energy recuperation and, and different variables as well. I think it's about a four page paper. If you guys are interested, feel free to contact us after this webinar and I'd be happy to share it with you. Okay. And the next application we're gonna to cover today is on AI um, for ReadyMix solutions. And so this slide here just overviews what the potential challenges are. Um, and so on, once you have your clinker, the final um, delivering to the distribution facility, as well as the final leg from the distribution facility to the construction site. And so, um, Really, like like most other logistics challenges, um, what what we're facing here is how do you go about having a customer centric supply chain and making sure that you're going to gain market share, you're going to keep your customers happy and satisfied, um, and making that as one of your main priorities and and basically optimizing the um, the logistics piece once you have this product. And so um, there are high costs here. Um, it potentially could be one of the higher costs of the business. And there are fines that can be experienced if you don't deliver um, on schedule or to your SLA. There's a number of different things that have to be considered. And sometimes there's not always end-to-end -end visibility of what's happening um, or being able to adjust to changes in real time like traffic, cancellations, weather, things along those nature. So this next slide here is basically um, how AI could be fit into the solution. And so similar to that of Petuum Optimum, where we are predicting what's going to happen in the future, by being able to ingest different data sources like contracts, um, sales history, weather data, traffic patterns, um, what your existing um, assets and resources are, you're able to um, help optimize this part of the solution by using natural language processing, um, pattern recognition, and then again, providing that end-to-end -end visibility and optimization. And so here are some of the anticipated value adds. Um, so being able to have better schedule adherence to keep your customers happy and to minimize any fees, making sure that you maximize your truck and driver utilization, your resources. Also that you have appropriate network balancing across your different distribution centers um, and making sure that you're minimizing the cost from point A to point B. Roberto, is there anything that you'd like to add? Well, what I would like to add is that it, this is a very challenging problem uh, because for a human being to do the scheduling, uh, having uh, multiple customers, uh, multiple plants where they can uh, uh, for the ready mix into the trucks and all of the trucks and also uh, human resource limitations. How, uh, how long a driver can drive within a week, for example. All of those things are really difficult to do uh, by, by a human being. Uh, but by uh, using um, historical data plus optimization together, we can get to uh, an optimum solution that can save uh, a lot of money in terms of co cost, right? On different type of cost, mm -hmm. correct. So. Yeah, we'll break all of those different variables down in one second, but some other things just for the audience to think about. So the reason why AI is such a strong factor here is because first off, being able to integrate all those different data sources into one central location and make inferences from them is very important. So that's whenever having a strong AI platform comes into play and then being able to visualize what's actually happening on the ground. And then also being able to have a self-learning um, capability where you're not just learning from historical data, but in real time based on what recommendations are being accepted by your master planner and your scheduler, um, being able to, even from the weather data, being able to forecast, are, are there going to be um, are there going to be reasons why customers are going to cancel my orders? Or is there a particular customer that is, um, that, is uh, that cancels more often compared to others? And potentially you should be prioritizing other customers over that one. And so these are all things that go into the, into the mix whenever you're bringing an AI solution into play. And then lastly here, so 
being able to optimize ready mix across the board is a very complicated problem. Um, and it's not just that final leg that you want to consider. Ultimately, you can, you can break this into multiple stages that even go back to the production planning element. And so here we have it broken down into three different phases, as well as what are some of the considerations or the variables that are, that are inputs to the AI solution at that particular step. And so the first one is, first off, just matching demand to supply. So what do you have existing ready to sell? What orders do you have in place? What assets do you have to deliver it? And how do you optimize what you're doing? Um, the second one is, is how do you go about scheduling the truck and the resources, making sure that you are, um, that you are planning accordingly. If someone has to call out or a truck is under maintenance, how do you, how do you account for that in a real time scenario? And then third is demand prioritization. So based on um, our pattern recognition technologies, um, based on the revenue potential, how do you prioritize and stack your customers based on what's going to bring in the most versus potential um, fees if you don't, if you're not able to adhere to the SLA, um, and also the transportation costs just from point A to point B. Great, and we're just about to wrap up here and open it up for questions. But I wanted to end on, regardless of what application you're considering, if it's asset and process optimization, if it is uh, ready mix distribution, demand forecasting, um, there's a number of different things that we can think of. Um, really, this is the framework that Petuum takes in order to solve those problems. And so first off, being able to be agnostic to the data sources. So today we have different integrations and plugins with a number um, of, of different sources and apps, such as um, historians, we take in information in the form of images, videos, even handwritten notes. Um, being able to take and ingest all of that and prepare it for modeling. And that's all being done on our core foundation, which is the Symphony AI platform. Um, so this is going to prep your data for, for inferencing and for training. Then we actually apply our, our AI building blocks or the algorithms to solve those problems. And we can do this for a number of things. Like if we go back to the manufacturing um, category, we can look at individual assets. We can look at processes which string together individual assets and then other operational excellence goals such as re reducing emissions, alternate fuel, uh, the list goes on. And then additionally, um, the goal in that instance was to get to a supervised steer mode where those prescriptions were being accepted automatically and taking actions on the line. But depending on what the application is, potentially we don't need to go that far, right? And that's, 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 a, um, that's a conversation that we can have together to figure out what is the best solution for your needs. But potentially you can get value just out of the prediction element or prescriptions where a human is still in the loop validating and they're taking the actual actions and recommendations from us or the whole way to a supervised steer environment. And then you saw some of the example reports that we had, but here are a few other options. Um, it could be a simple PDF report in some instances, other dashboards, um, or if you're looking for a custom solution, we have um, APIs that help integrate with other applications. And on a final note here, uh, this is just a reminder of what are some applications and workflows where AI could come into play, um, helping enhance or augment um, operators or other decision-making processes with a data-driven approach. And finally, don't forget, you guys are all going to get an email, get routed to take this survey. You've got the chance to win. There's three different folks who'll win a $50 gift card to Amazon, and then one person will get that two-hour workshop. Um, and, those, and for those of you who dialed in after the fact, this is basically um, a, a new thing that we're doing just for this webinar, where um, Traditionally, like say if you were to get a consultant to come in for two hours, it, it could be a couple of thousand dollars. Um, but we're going to make it all about what you want to talk about. So 
If you want us to look at your data and review that with you, um, identify what the, what the workflow or the architecture requirements would be, what the connectivity should be. Um, even if you want us help you, to help you prioritize what your use cases should be, what's gonna bring you the most business value and what actually is best suited for artificial intelligence and machine learning technology. Um, really, it's, it's two hours of your choice. And so I encourage everyone to uh, do the survey and have a chance to win some of these prizes. All right, and that wraps up the presentation for today. Um, I will open it up for questions. And so if you guys have anything, you can go ahead and write into that chat window. All right, Roberto, I got one um, I think might pertain to you. Okay. So how long does the Petroum Optimum product take to implement? Well, I, I, I would say that it depends on the complexity of the asset. Uh, there are some assets that are uh, 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 faster to do. For example, a cooler, uh, we are talking about three months uh, from uh, data collection and definition to uh, you know, when the system is already providing a prescription for, um, for our customer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, here's another one for you. Um, so what do you do if you don't have enough or the right type of data? Well, uh, we need to do an assessment. Uh, typically, what we find is that there is some data, some information. And the reason that I, uh, is that somebody has been operating the system in any, uh, we have an op a real operator, right? So either if we have a process day historian, we can take a look at the resolution. If there is a, a control system, it may it might have some historical data. So uh, there is always the case there is some data, uh, and then we need to create a plan uh, in order to to say, okay, what is what is the gap, and when we can really start a, a, a model, right? But that's it's it's a it's a little bit uh, like a, a very broad question. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, of course, we can always uh, take a look at what data is currently mm -hmm. available. And in yeah. some cases, we can even go about some of those um, starting stages of building the correlations, the predictions, and then over time, um, once data is collected, say after even three months, being able to um, bring it to, to a new level. Exactly. Okay, here's one more question that I have coming in. Um, so how would you go about actually implementing the solution? Like what's, what's the business model? Maybe that's something I can help answer, Roberto. So um, this is offered as a software as a service option um, for our industrial solutions, such as the Petroum Optimum product. Uh, we recently just released a new program, um, which has very short time to value. So um, depending on the asset, we, we work with you to, to select what it is. And it can be anywhere from three to four months. And the goal is to actually launch the solution on your plant, on your site. You see the value and the upside on your real assets rather than just potentially what other of our customers have seen. And then we make a decision if you want to turn it into um, a, a subscription service. And so if you want more information on that program, feel free to contact us afterwards, business at petuum.com. Um, and I'd be happy to share more info. Um, 